Yep, that's me on a pig hunt in Hawaii. But this isn't exactly how it looks. Pig right there. I'm actually doing this to save coral reefs. Let me explain. I came to the big island of Hawaii to understand how feral pigs, along with climate change, are contributing to the destruction of coral reefs here. What's happening is the pigs are up Malka in the forest and they're foraging up there for worms and for snails. And so they dig up this, the soil. Once the rains come intermittently and flood these streams, that's when we get a big pulse of sediment out onto the reef. As soon as sediment covers the coral, the coral typically dies. If it's smothered, it can't get sunlight, it can't get oxygen, it can't get nutrients, and it's dead. If the coral manages to survive, every time the waves come, it gets resuspended, and the sediment continues to do damage, sometimes for decades. Last year, the Big Island of Hawaii experienced the largest coral bleaching event in recorded history. Right now, I'm on a boat with scientists from the Division of Aquatic Resources and NOAA to survey the current state of coral. Even to my untrained eye, I could see that the decaying coral had lost their vibrancy, and there were significantly fewer fish. To actually see these huge, you know, multi, hundred or many hundreds of year old colonies completely bleached and stressed and you know with that good chance that they weren't going to survive it was really devastating really awful to see and I think that was the first time for me that the magnitude of this was obvious that you know we might not see recovery from this event in our lifetimes coral reefs are important for a number of reasons. There's no other ecosystem on this planet that occupies such a small geographic area, but has more forms of life than coral reef ecosystems. They're unprecedented. You know, one in four of all marine organisms live in association with coral reefs, but they occupy less than one-tenth of one percent of the seafloor. This is Dr. Jamie Gove, a research oceanographer for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. He also lets me sleep on his couch. So without coral reefs, all of those waves and storms and currents would reach shore and wreak havoc on all of the shoreline property that we saw today, among other things. Since feral pigs are contributing to the damage we saw underwater, I met up with Chad back on dry land to see how fencing is helping to control the problem. Once a fence is constructed in a priority area where you want to conserve forest or retain sediment, hunters can come in and reduce the populations. It's important to note that the eradication of feral pigs is not the goal here. In fact, pigs are extremely significant to the islands, historically and culturally. When pigs and goats were dropped off by Captain Cook in 1778, uh, they found paradise here. Domestic pig bred with the Polynesian pig, which was already here at the time of arrival. The fact that the pigs were here when Captain Cook arrived means that the Polynesians valued them enough to bring them across the ocean to Hawaii and cultivate them. And pigs are still highly valued by locals here. The problem is their population is exploding you would have to remove 70% of the current pig population each year to keep them under control. Which is why people like Justin Lee and Wayne Cipriano are still hunting pigs. Without hunters, without people um, regulating the numbers, Hawaii as we know it will never be the same. All of the useful meat from this animal is going to be made into appetizers at a baby first luau or a wedding. It'll be food on the table, not just for our family, but for a lot of different families. And Justin makes a good argument, which is why I found myself on this hunt. Climate change is endangering coral reefs all over the world, and our ability to deal with land-based impacts like feral pig could make the difference in the survival of these reefs. Are you aware of other invasive species impacting the environment where you live? Let us know in the comments below. And check out this next episode on another island in Hawaii, where one company is growing algae to power airplanes and more. So this is the dried algae product. After we dry it, we grind it up into powder and then we extract the oil out of it. That oil is then refined into diesel fuel or jet fuel. The fuel that we're producing is exactly the same in terms of performance as gasoline or diesel or jet. It's just a lot cleaner. Thanks for watching Seeker Stories and be sure to subscribe for new videos every week.